1 Thessalonians 5.1. The title of our message is A Thief in the Night. A Thief in the Night. We're going to be talking about uh, this wrath, this time of tribulation. Uh, a Thief in the Night. A Thief in the Night is talking about a time after the rapture of the church. So we're going to look at these things. We're going to look at end time uh, stuff. Well, if you remember last week, we, we looked at the rapture of the church. We looked at the fact that when the rapture takes place, we, if it's during our time, if we become part of the rapture in our generation, that we're going to have glorified bodies, remember, right? So we're going to have new bodies. Those that come back in the cloud, we meet them in the cloud, they're going to have their glorified bodies at the time. If you're not a Christian, you should fear because wrath is going to hit this earth. So it's, you, you, you can escape it. It's simple. Trust in Jesus Christ. Repent from sin and ask Jesus to be your Savior. Amen? But concerning the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. People were very well instructed by the Word of God regarding eschatology, end-time events. So they, he says, I don't have to explain it to you. You guys get it. You know about the rapture. You guys know about end-time stuff. So he says, you perfectly, you know it already. He says, for you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a, can we say it again? Thief in the night. The, the day of the Lord, though, a thief in the night. So the day of the Lord, in many places in the Old Testament, it talks about this day. This day, the day of the Lord, is actually a seven-year period. And it's a time that we looked at in the book of Revelation, a time of tribulation, also known as Jacob's, you guys know? Trouble, Jacob's trouble. Uh, I want to put a timeline up there to, to show you uh, the day of the Lord. So you see it's right here, that seven-year time of tribulation. We looked at it when we were in the book of Revelation, Revelation 6 through 19. We looked at the seven seal judgments that'll hit the earth, the seven trumpet judgments that hit the earth, the seven bowl judgments that hit the earth. So, it's bad, as you recall, as we looked at. Um, I believe that we're probably right about there. And I'm not setting dates. I'm not saying that, you know, I believe that. But I truly believe the church should always be in a readiness for the Jesus to come at any time. Things that have been going on around the world, things that we've been looking at for months, even the last two years, I believe it's all building up. I believe that we're seeing a foreshadowing of this devastation that will hit the earth. There will be devastation. It's called the day of the Lord, the time of Jacob's trouble. This is going to happen after the rapture of the church. So if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, no anxiety. You don't have to worry. Why? Because we're going to be caught up together with the Lord in the air. But this devastation, the day of the Lord will hit. Isaiah 13, 6. Isaiah 13, 6 says, Wail for the day of the what? Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the who? From God. That's why we're not appointed to wrath. This wrath that's going to come, it's going to come from the Almighty. It's going to come from God. He's going to pour out his wrath on a world that rejects him, an evil world that follows the Antichrist. There God will judge the world. Every man's heart will do what? Melt. And they will be afraid. Pangs and sorrow will take hold of them. They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. They will be amazed at one another. Their faces will be like flames. Behold, the Day of the Lord, again, comes cruel with both wrath and fierce anger to lay the land, can we say that, desolate, and he will destroy its sinners from it, not us, not the church. We're not considered sinners. We're, we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? For the stars of heaven and their consolation will not give their light. The sun will be darkened during the time of tribulation. And it's going forth and the moon will not cause its light to shine. I will punish the, can we say that aloud? That means the whole world. For it's what? Evil. And the wicked for their iniquities. I will halt the arrogance of the proud. I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So God's going to deal with the world. It's coming. You can't stop it, but we can escape it through Jesus Christ. Amen. But in context, it, it means the day of the Lord, the day of trouble is going to come upon a world as a thief in the night. And I, I have three things that I think of when I think of it coming as a thief in the night. It'll come unexpected. People aren't going to expect it. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. It comes 
unwelcomed. They're not going to welcome it. When, when it comes, when a thief comes, it's not a welcoming thing, right? And it's going to come, can we say that out loud? Unpleasant. It does. It's these, th- these three things. And I believe that that's what's going to happen to this world. It's going to be unexpected, unwelcome, un- very unpleasant for the people that are here. It's not the church that's going to experience this thief. It's the world that will experience in that way. Jesus talking to the dead church of Sardis. I find it interesting. He's talking to the church. And it's called the dead church. They thought they were alive, but Jesus says, you're dead. And listen to this. He says, remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. So you're in the church. You've heard the word of God. You know, you received it. Watch how you do that. Hold fast and do what? Repent in the church. Therefore, if you will not watch... Be alert, be awake spiritually, watching for the coming of the Lord. I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know the hour I will come upon you. That's the church. I've had people ask me, Pastor, do you think the church will get raptured? And I said, yeah, the believers in the church, not everyone in the church. Don't think because you go to a church you're going to get raptured. We're all sinners. We need to accept Jesus as our Savior. He made a very radical claim. He said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He's the only way. But we escape. But in the church, this shows us there's going to be some in the church that are, they're not there for the right reasons. They're not there to learn. They're not there to receive. They're not understanding. They're not taking hold. They're not watching spiritually. They're not awake spiritually. They're dead. Sardis is a dead church, and every church can have this. I believe they can have people in the church that are just dead spiritually, and I would say, wake up. Wake up. Wake up spiritually. Wake up. Seriously. The thief is going to come. It refers to the day of the Lord, the time of wrath, the time of Jacob's trouble. So it has to be consistent. Notice when they say, not us, not the church, when they say peace and safety, then sudden Destruction comes upon them. You're going to notice after this, it's going to say you, we, us. No, no, no. This is them, not us, not the church. Can I get an amen for that? Sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pangs of a woman, pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. I believe this is talking about at the beginning of the tribulation period, there's going to be a false peace. It'll be false safety and security. Why? The Antichrist. I'll I'll put a chart up here. Again, I'll add to this. So you're going to have this false peace and safety. Revelation 6.2, the the rider on the white horse, the Antichrist. He's going to come with a bow with no arrows. He's going to come in peace. He's going to come in deception. We're going to look at another verse that talks about this. So at the beginning of the tribulation period, there will be false peace and safety. Uh, As you know, at the beginning of the the, the tribulation period, so this this, uh, one world leader, the Antichrist is going to rise up. There'll be this false prophet that'll be with him. It'll be a one world government. There'll be a one world world religion, they're all going to think it's all great, peace and safety, it's, it's good. But when they say that, and this, right after that, sudden destruction is going to happen. That's when the seven seal bowls, the seven trumpet bowls, the uh, seven trumpet so hit, the seven bowl judgments hit, and there will be destruction. So we read about that in the book of Revelation. But look at Daniel. He talks about this. So this is talking about the Antichrist. Daniel 8.23 says, In the latter time of their kingdom, when the, the transgressions have reached their, full, their fullness, so this is when, the, the, when uh, the, the tribulation period hits, a king, that's the Antichrist, shall rise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be, can we say that? Mighty. But not by his own power. Why? Because he'll be empowered by Satan himself. Remember, the Antichrist will be, so it's not by his own power. It's going to be, he'll be empowered by Satan. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. Who's like him, they're going to say. Shall destroy the mighty, listen to this, and also the holy people. That's it, I believe, the tribulation saints. So it fits perfectly. He, he'll be able to have, it can't be us. Why? Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We're not the tribulation saints. We're empowered by the Holy Spirit. They will not have power like we have 
the church is empowered by the Holy Spirit. But during the time of tribulation, it says he'll destroy even the holy people. They'll be beheaded for their faith. Through his cunning, he shall cause, can we say that together? Deceit to what? Prosper under his rule. I think we're seeing the starts of that already. Deceit to prosper under his rule. He is going to be so deceptive that people are going to follow him and believe he's true when he's a liar, he's a thief, and he's out to kill and destroy. But the deceit will prosper under his rule. Today, when people are telling truth, even, do you know, our Bible studies, we get, we get censored, we get all kinds. We, we get threatened to get, get kicked off, the, off online. Whenever we touch the subjects that are very important to people, uh, it, it's, they just do that. They send us notices and say, well, this is a warning, and they're going to take you off. Why? Because they don't like truth. We're seeing the starts of this, guys. And he shall exalt himself in his heart, puffed up with pride. He shall destroy many in their... Let's stop there. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. So I believe during this little short period of time when they have safety, they have peace, that word prosperity is also peace and prosperity that means the same thing together. I believe what's going to happen, the rapture of the church is going to happen. Millions upon millions of people are going to be gone. What are they going to do with all that wealth? So I believe possibly this Antichrist, he's going to say, let's share the wealth. Let's get your prosperity. Let's prosper. And he's going to, so it's in their prosperity, he's going to destroy them. Just take the mark. No problem. Just the mark of the beast. Worship me. Bow down. We'll take care of you. Everybody's account. We'll give a uh, million dollars in everybody's account or whatever it is. He's going to destroy them with prosperity. In their prosperity, he shall even rise against the prince of princes. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, the prince of princes. He, he, so, so during the, the Armageddon, he's going to think he can come against Jesus. He's going to try to, but he shall be broken without human means. So Jesus is going to, by the smite him with the, the, the breath of his mouth, he's going to be put into the lake of fire. This is, we won't be here. But we need to warn others that we'll be here. We pray that they, they'll escape this through Jesus. Amen. The whole great, this great reset, everything that's happening today, Klaus Schwab tells global leaders to collaborate for world governance. He says the time has come for, the world, for world governance to unite as one and tackle global problems such as climate change, trade, and economic disrupt, dis, disruption without hindrance or delay. Now's the time. Let's get it together. So uh, he's the founder, you know this, executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. So he's, he's calling for it. I believe not only are we seeing foreshadowing things happening, that this time could be soon, we see stuff like this. Did you guys see this? Newsom makes California a sanctuary state for children, for a child sex change without parental consent. That's evil. That is just evil. That's just one of the things that he's doing. On Thursday, California Governor Gavin Newsom signs into law a piece of legislation that will designate the state as a, sanctu a sanctuary for children and teens seeking medicalized gender transition without telling your parents. Is that just evil or... Are they taking crazy pills? He needs to repent. And then you have, you guys, I showed this two weeks ago, but I want to remind you. So remember, so Gavin Newsom, not only that, not only is he, uh, he he's running for president, he's announced that he's going to uh, run for president. So he has billboards out all over different states. He says, you need an abortion. He says, California is ready to help if you need to kill your baby. And then he quotes out of Mark 12, the words of Jesus, to love your neighbor as yourself. There's no greater command. That's evil. That's satanic. Quoting the words of Jesus to come and kill your baby. This kind of stuff is blasphemous. To quote Jesus' words to kill children is blasphemous. We are so ripe, guys, for judgment. Lord, help. Then, as we know, Putin vows to use any means to defend annex, into annex, annex uh, Ukraine region, a new nuke threat after the biggest land grab since World War II. So I find it interesting, Putin keeps saying, um, I'm going to use nuclear. Then he even says, I'm not kidding. I'm not making this stuff up. 
Um, let's think of this. Who's the largest, who has the largest arsenal of nuclear weapons in the world? Not the United States. Russia. They have the largest arsenal of, in the world. It's them. And then I find it interesting, Zechariah 14, 12 talks about during the time of tribulation, their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet, their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongue shall dissolve in their mouth. Back then, they just had arrows. It sounds like it could be a nuclear attack during the time of tribulation. God, you brethren, I love this. Now it's not them, now it turns to us. You brethren, notice brethren. You are not in darkness, so this day should, can we say that word together? Overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light, sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So that word overtake means it won't come upon you, brethren. It won't lay hold of you. Why? Because we will be raptured before this time. God will take us to be with him. Therefore, let, notice the wording, us. So for them, destruction. For them, devastation. For them, the day of the Lord's coming. But for us, what are we supposed to do? Where's the application? For us, let us not sleep. That, that means to be dead spiritually, to be indifferent spiritually, and, and spiritual things. Let, it, let us be alive spiritually. Let us not be indifferent about spiritual things. Let us not be dead regarding spiritual things. Let's be quickened and alive to the things of the Spirit. So that's our application. What, what else do we do? Let's watch and be sober. Listen, the time is at hand. I truly believe, scripturally speaking, Jesus Christ can come at any time, any time. The harvest is plentiful. There's a lot of work to do. The labors are few. There's very few that are actually, they're taking it seriously. The Bible says they're few. So the wake-up call is wake up spiritually. Don't be intoxicated with this world. Don't be caught up in the things of this world. If there's something in your life that's just totally taken over your thoughts and your mind, get rid of it. The world we live in today Desires to drive people by fear and worry and panic. But if you don't do this, oh, you could die. We don't have to worry. And when we give it to God and when we meditate on things that are good, lovely, things that are praiseworthy, things that are pure, things that are holy, things of God, the word of God, Jesus Christ, he will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him for he trusts in him. When we're in that state, God can use us. The enemy wants all of us to worry, wants us to panic. But I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. If you could show me a scripture to panic, then tomorrow I'm panicking. <laughs> but it's not in there. God wants us to be governed by him. And he doesn't want us to worry. A thief in the night, that's not for us. That's for a world that rejects God. We, as believers, to be absent from our body means we're going to be in the presence of the Lord for all eternity. Our loved ones that know Jesus, they died, they're there with him. They're in his presence right now. I believe the rapture can happen at any time. I believe we're seeing a foreshadow of things to come I've had even people that go to this church that are trying to, they're showing me, Pastor, look at, I really believe, you know, the seal judgments, they've already started. This is happening, this is, I was, no, 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 no. That's a foreshadow. They haven't happened yet. Why? Because we're still here. And there's a lot of work to do, guys. Don't be fooled. Don't be tricked. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be awake. Be alive. Ask the Lord to set your soul on fire for Jesus. Why? There's a dying world around us. They need Jesus. Otherwise, Sudden destruction is going to come, but they can escape it. Amen.